Hello students, welcome back to new session. Today we are starting chapter 1 of class 7 NCRT. The name of the chapter is Nutrition in Plants. The learning objectives of today's video are we will learn about nutrients, nutrition, mode of nutrition, phases, the process of photosynthesis, cell structure, etc. In previous class, you have learnt about components of food. The components of food are carbohydrates, fat, protein, vitamin, mineral. And except these five major nutrients, roughage and water are also major components of food. These nutrients are essential for all living organisms. Why these are essential? Due to the following reasons, these nutrients are essential for our body. They help to grow. They help to maintenance of the one of cells, repairing of the one of body parts and they give you energy when you do work, when you play and of course they protect you from diseases also. So all these are the nutrients. Nutrients are the substances which are essential for our body. Now we come to the topic of our today's video, this is nutrition. What is nutrition? The process of taking food by an organism and utilization of these food nutrients by our body after digestion of the food with the help of assimilation of the nutrients is called nutrition. That means nutrition include obtaining of food and after digestion, assimilation of the nutrients. Basically, on this uh, more, uh, on the basis of mode of nutrition, organisms are divided into two groups: autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Organisms are called autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs. As the name indicates, auto means cell and drop means nutrition. That means those organisms which can prepare food in their body with the help of some simpler substances, carbon dioxide and water. These are called autotrophs. All autotrophs contain chlorophyll and they prepare food with the help of process of photosynthesis. All green plants, blue green algae, etc., are called autotrophs. The second category is of heterotrophs. Heterotrophs, as the term indicates, hetero means others, and trophs means again nourishment. So, here, heterotrophs are those organisms which cannot prepare their food themselves in their body, but they are directly or indirectly dependent on plants for their food. All animals and fungus and of course human beings are heterotrophs. If uh, one question may arise in your mind that why human beings are called heterotrophs, you can be human beings, we can prepare food in our kitchen but we cannot prepare food in our body because we do not have chlorophyll. So all those organisms we do not have chlorophyll cannot prepare food in their body and these are known as heterotrophs. Now why some organisms contain chlorophyll and some cannot contain chlorophyll in their body, in their cells? The answer is given by the structure of the cells. What are cells? Cell is the fundamental unit of life. This is the smallest basic unit by which our body is made up of. Our body means body of all organisms, all living beings is made up of cells. And cells are bounded by cell membrane. Inside that cell membrane, a liquid is filled and that is known as cytoplasma. There is a Control center also, which is called nucleus, and which control all the functions of the cell. Now, if you differentiate between the structure of plant and animal, as it is seen in the picture, you can 
recognize that in plant cell cell wall and chloroplast are found but these are not available in animal cell what are chloroplast chloroplast is a type of plastids actually plastids are of three types chloroplast chloroplast and leucoplast they are different functions in different parts of the plants chloroplast which provide green color due to the presence of a pigment known as chlorophyll chloroplast which provide different color to different parts of the plant as in flowers and different other parts also fruits also and uh, leucoplast which are found in the hidden part of the plant which are not seen and uh, do not show specific color for example roots so these are the plastids and due to uh, these chloroplast uh, the green plants can prepare their food now we come to the next topic that is photosynthesis photo means light and synthesis means to make so photosynthesis is the process of making food by green plants by using raw materials carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll the product of photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen glucose is a simplest carbohydrate which is prepared in kitchen of the plant and what is kitchen of the plant leaves so this glucose after produced in the leaf it will be stored in different forms mostly it is stored in the form of esters esters is a complex carbohydrate now the for this process of the photosynthesis there are four essential conditions as you have seen in the picture these are carbon dioxide water sunlight and chlorophyll one by one we will discuss all these things first is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is obtained from the green plants from air and how it is to inside of the plants it is it will enter inside the green leaves through stomata stomata are the tiny pores which are found on the lower surface of terrestrial plants and they if we talk about aquatic plants uh, these are found on the upper surface of the leaves which are protected which are seen on the outer surface of the water bodies so through these stomata carbon dioxide can enter inside the green leaves during the process of photosynthesis and oxygen is expelled out in the process of photosynthesis in the same way in the process of respiration of also gases exchange of gases will occur through the stomata only these stomata are the tiny pores which are guarded by mean cell cells known as guard cells when guard cells are turgid the stomata will be open and when the guard cells are flaccid the stomata will be closed when the stomata are open the exchange of gases will occur through this stomata now the second is water water with minerals is found inside the inter particular species of soil and these are the obtained from the soil only it will be absorbed from the roots of the plants and it will transported to all parts of the plant by interconnected network of pipe or vessels known as xylem xylem is a specific tissue of tubular structures which will carry the water and mineral to all parts of the plant the next is chlorophyll chlorophyll the green color pigment which is found in the specific cell organelle called chloroplast and the main important function of this chloroplast is to trap the solar energy this solar energy will be utilized for combination of carbon dioxide and water to make food by green leaves now sunlight without sunlight plants cannot prepare food because sunlight will provide energy for combination of carbon dioxide and water and this will be trapped by chlorophyll after this process of 
photosynthesis, food will be produced in the form of glucose. It will be stored in the form of starch. You can also test whether starch is prepared in or stored in the leaves or not by iodine test. For this, what we have to do? We can do an activity. And for this, we have to take two potted plants of same type of plant. And one of the pot we will keep in darkness for three or four days. And the other we will keep in outside in the sunlight. The plant which you keep inside the darkness, it will not be able to make food in the absence of sunlight. After four days, you will pluck leaves from all the plants. And the leaf which you plug from the potted plant which are kept in the sunlight, there, uh, when you will put some drops of iodine on it, the reddish brown color of iodine will change into blue black. That shows the presence of stars in that leaf. But if we test of uh, the leaf plugged from the uh, potted plant which was kept in the darkness, uh, the color of the iodine will not change into blue black in the, when you test the stars in that leaf. It shows that the light is necessary for the process of photosynthesis. Now, there is an amazing thing, surprising thing that you find many plants, they do not have green color in their leaves. Their leaves are of different color like red, brown, etc. But still they are able to perform the process of photosynthesis. How is it possible? It is possible again due to the presence of chlorophyll only, but here chlorophyll is either the color provided by chromoplast like red, brown, etc. This, uh, this different color will mask the green color that means the color of the chlorophyll and uh, they are able to perform the process of photosynthesis. Now, one person can arrange in your mind, can any other part of the plant also can prepare food? Yes, of course it can, if it has chlorophyll. For example, if we talk about cactus, you see that for preventing the loss of water due to the process of transpiration, the leaves of the cactus are converted into spines. If leaves are convert into a spine then who will perform this process of photosynthesis? The branches and stem of the cactus will perform the process of photosynthesis and store the food also. That's why the branches and stem are green and fleshy of cactus. Photosynthesis is also seen a different type of organism which look like a simple type of plant. This is known as algae. And you can observe it near water bodies, near water tank, and any area where water is locked, you can observe it in the form of a slimy layer of green color there. Yes, now we are talking about synthesis of food in the form of glucose by green plants. But can green plants prepare food in different form also? Can they prepare food except glucose also? Yes. Food can be formed or stored in different forms also. It can, can be stored in the form of fat, in the form of protein, vitamins, etc. Glucose is made up of three elements, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. This glucose is the simplest form of carbohydrate. This glucose can be converted into a complex form known as a star. It is again made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and it is stored in different parts of the plant. For example, in cereals you can observe grains of cereal like rice, like wheat, etc. They store this uh, starch in their seeds. Now, oil. Again, it is made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but it, these are the complex molecules and uh, these are uh, found in the oily seeds of them. 
but in pulses protein is formed but protein is not only made up of these three elements carbon hydrogen oxygen but they contain one more element that is nitrogen from where this nitrogen is obtained by plants all of you know that in our atmosphere 70% of uh, the this part uh, the ratio of this uh, uh, atmospheric constituents uh, is nitrogen but still plants are not able to obtain di of nitrogen directly from them so still 78% part of the atmosphere pure air is nitrogen but plants are not able to obtain from there then from where they will get they will get it from the soil only and in the soil this nitrogen is used with the help of either fertilizers manures or atmospheric nitrogen fixation which occur in during rainy season due to lightning otherwise there is a very important part that is rhizobium bacteria it is found in the root nodules of leguminous plants and this rhizobium bacteria so symbiotic relationship with leguminous plants these rhizobium bacteria will absorb the atmospheric nitrogen convert it into nitrogenous compounds and transfer it into the soil from where with the water and other minerals nitrogen compound will also reach to the plants and it will utilize to make the protein the next is vitamins in fruits vegetables in the cereals vitamins different vitamins are found and this is another form in which food is prepared by green plants in the last i want to explain about importance of photosynthesis photosynthesis is very important for survival of life on the earth because due to photosynthesis we get not only food but also oxygen which is very very essential for all living beings for the process of respiration so for for this food and oxygen photosynthesis is very important thank you